Really double check your shoes for Scorpions. <laughs> and Black Widows. <laughs> Well, so, I mean, outdoor adventure and outdoor recreation is, is, is fairly broad, but the idea, right, is to do anything outdoors, and um, I think there's a lot of benefits to, like, spending time outdoors, and specifically, um, when it comes to, like, human beings, um, you know, we get a connection with um, the outdoor and with nature, and so when we spend time outdoors, um, you know, it's often a way for us to, um, to decompress, it's a way for us to find ourselves, um, you know, there's something about nature that allows us to, to dig a little bit deeper, it seems like, um, and to, uh, and to at times challenge ourselves and achieve things that we didn't think we could. Um, and so I think uh, beside, you know, the, the connection to, um, or I'm not here, but the, the, the other piece being that um, by spending time outdoors, we develop an appreciation for the outdoor environment. And without that appreciation, people are not going to want to protect the environment. And so I think it's important to get people outdoors and to find a way for people to connect with the outdoor environment. Um, and generally, recreation is a way to do it. And so if you enjoy what you're doing outdoors, it's a chance that you're going to want to protect a place that you go for hikes or that you go to paddle or that you walk your dog, you know. Um, it doesn't have to be super complicated, but outdoor recreation is, is, is the way to to a certain extent to, see, to save the green spaces that are left on our planet. Okay, so um, the expedition class is a completely unique class because the way it's designed is that um, students uh, first get to pick where they're going to go. So I give the class um, a budget and um, which generally is is based on terms of like how far we can drive. That's what our budget allows us to do. And then based on that and based on other criteria, um, students come up with some ideas of where they want to go. And then as a class, we vote on where we're going to go and then we agree on uh, a location. Um, once that's done, the class gets separated into planning groups. So we have a group that is going to do everything related to equipment. There's a group that plans everything related to food. There's a group that plans everything related to emergencies, um, there's a plan, other group that's going to plan the itinerary, um, another group that's going to plan kind of the transportation aspect, um, and then there's a group also that plans uh, everything related to media and sponsorship and making sure that the word gets out um, that we have this amazing experience. Um, and then every week we basically come back together and, and learn about the different aspects of planning. Um, and then once all that's done, we actually go on the expedition. If you want the culmination of the planning portion. Um, the rest is kind of transferring and, and thinking a little bit out of the box in terms of like decision making and, and um, different leadership style and group development and all these theories related to outdoor leadership which, which get kind of woven within um, all the planning and, and the lead leadership aspect of our class. Um, I think outdoor education is incredibly important because you get to have hands-on experience with real life challenges. You get to push yourself and in a challenge by choice atmosphere you get to really um, test your limits and see how far you can go. I think that's a very empowering experience. Usually in a traditional classroom the teacher is the one that we're learning from but I think and I don't think that's not necessarily the case in outdoor rec, I think we still learn from Genevieve, obviously, but we also learn from each other as well. That's encouraged 
and I don't think it's always encouraged in a traditional setting, and I don't think that's I don't think that's right. From my perspective, the benefits from outdoor adventure education to like a general education is like you're in the wild and you get all the um, lessons that we should be taught in like a regular school system. So like how to cook and how to take care of others and yourself, how to be in a team. Like we kind of learn that, but it's not very official. And so um, outdoor adventure just kind of it tests you and it pushes you to your limits and it puts you outside of your com comfort zone. So super important. Everyone should do it. Um, I've been, I've told a lot of people that I'm a rec major before and whenever I say that, people are always like, oh, so you get to go play all the time. You get to go backpacking and have fun, which is definitely a large section of it, but even a larger section is us doing work, us planning food for a week, us learning how to coordinate groups and how to talk to different people and how to teach different people. There's a whole set of skills that you learn that people don't even know that you learn. They think that you just go into the backcountry and hang out and play and then come back and that's all we do. That's definitely not it. Um, I want to be respected. I want to be looked at as a person that can teach you a little something something. And yeah. I think unfortunately mainstream society might underappreciate the skills that we learn as outdoor adventure students, but um, their practical skills and their transferable skills and my leadership skills I could take into any future job. So um, I think everything we learn in the backcountry and in our classes preparing us for the backcountry are really vital and they help us become stronger leaders and um, more confident in our own abilities. My solo went really well. I was really nervous for it because I've never been alone in the backcountry for that amount of time before and I've never had to sleep alone in the backcountry. So I was a little nervous about that, but it gave me a chance to sit and think, which I really never get a chance to do because I'm always so busy like when I'm here and we're busy the whole time on expedition. And it was really nice to have a time to sit and reflect on like, the past couple of years that I've been here and what I want to do in the future. Solo was amazing. I got to be comfortable. I learned that I could be comfortable alone. And then I saw the three horses that came behind me before horses that was amazing and it was very emotional because of all the um, it was like cold but I was able to throw my shelter on and then the horses came behind me the, the following morning and it made me just cry because I was so happy and um, I also wrote a lot so I was able to reflect on my past and my future and make plans and it was very um, it was great to have the opportunity to just be out there alone and realize that I need to get my stuff done just get back. I had all these ideas that I wanted to get home to and like do, so that was awesome. Yeah, exactly. Um, so my high from the trip was definitely my 24 hour solo. Being able to spend that time, clear my head and reflect at is something I've never been able to experience before. So I would definitely consider that um, the ultimate experience while out there. And then my low was probably just all the nerves going into it. Um, getting up to the trip was exciting and nerve-wracking, a, a little mini bit terrifying, even though I, I was wanting it and I was so, so ready to be out there. There was this mix of nerves and um, what if my group doesn't meld well together? What if I get sick in the backcountry? <laughs> and it was just... Um, so silly to have any nerves going into it because it was the most amazing experience. I think the high was like when we all met at the top. So when both groups got together and we all got to see each other and like we all got to share the excitement and the fun that we've been feeling throughout the whole trip and seeing everyone else. Uh, and then the low might have been the day it like poured on us for like 15 minutes. Um, but that wasn't really a low because then afterwards we got like a a beautiful double rainbow and so that was kind of like a gift more than a low. Yeah, so um, you know that there's it's challenging at times to you know when you're used to leading and you're used to being the one that um, you know makes a decision about going right or going left and when we eat and when we sleep and where we sleep and, right it's challenging to let go but I will say that um, over the years, I'm getting better at letting um, students uh, 
decide and lead, um, you know, and basically support them rather than tell them what to do when we're out there. And, um, and it's really powerful. Like, I love seeing the learning that comes from that. Um, in, you know, I'll be honest, I get, I get a lot of pleasure both, uh, and you know, and not in a mean way or anything, but it's, it's fun to see people like succeed and also make mistakes, not, you know, but good mistakes, right? You know, this idea that it's okay to like take the wrong route, you know, or, or it's okay to like try a leadership style and realize it doesn't work. Um, and so I get a lot of pride and joy and like, I, um, I get really proud of my students out there. I, I want them to hopefully find that pride in themselves and, and you know I don't want to be the one that creates that like I think it's important that they get that and so hopefully letting people lead um, and make decisions gives them that pride so when I think about the expedition class um, I'll be honest that the most important thing for me is that students the class with a memorable experience. Um, I I know the power of going on an expedition with other people and um, seeing an environment that you've never been to and challenging yourself on a daily basis and eating meals with all these people every day and making mistakes sometimes when you choose the route you're going to. Um, and all that creates a basis for like these completely crazy, um, unique experience that you can't really replicate anywhere else. And the world of like outdoor adventure expedition is completely unique. And in the end, like I think what students get is really that memory and knowing how much they changed and how much they got challenged and, and how powerful it was. Um, and then hopefully, because it's a unique experience, students go and want to do the same thing with other people, you know, with future clients and future participants. So, yeah, I, I could say that it's, you know, the technical skills and the theory, but I think in the end, the experience is really the most, the most important educational aspect of the class. It's okay to be nervous. Sometimes the way to think about nervousness is that it's excitement. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I would say you're probably not the only one that's nervous. Um, and that, you know, as long as you want to do it and that you are, um, you know, a body that can move, um, you can do it. So I've already said this word so many times, but my one word would be that it was empowering. I'm go with bonding. There's a lot of bonding on the trip. My word's blissful. Fulfilling. Very strong.